Mrs. Pierce. Damn. I meant to tell her I wanted coffee in the morning instead of tea. Leave a little note for her, will you, Eliza? Where the devil are my slippers? There are your slippers in bed! Take your slippers and may you never have another day's luck with them! What in the world? What's the matter? Is anything wrong? No, nothing wrong with you. I've won your bet for you, haven't I? That's enough for you? I don't matter, I suppose? You won my bet. You, presumptuous insect. I won it. What the devil did you throw those slippers at me for? Because I wanted to smash your face. I'd like to kill you, you selfish brute. Why didn't you leave me where you picked me out of in the gutter? You thank God it's all over and you can throw me back again there, do you? So the creature is nervous after all. Ah, claws in, you cat. How dare you show your temper to me? Sit down and be quiet. What's to become of me? What's to become of me? How the devil do I know what's to become of you? What does it matter what becomes of you? You don't care. I know you don't care. You wouldn't care if I were dead. I am nothing to you, not so much as them slippers. Those slippers. Those slippers. I didn't think it made any difference now. Why have you suddenly begun going on like this? May I ask whether you complain of your treatment here? Has anyone behaved badly to you? Colonel Pickering? Mrs. Pierce? No. You don't pretend that I have treated you badly? No. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Perhaps you're tired after the strain of the day. Have a chocolate? No. Thank you. I suppose it was natural for you to be anxious. But it's all over now. There's nothing more to worry about. No, nothing more for you to worry about. Oh, I wish I were dead. But why, Eliza? Why? Listen to me. All this irritation, it's purely subjective. I don't understand. I'm too ignorant. It's only your imagination. Nobody's hurting you. There's nothing wrong. Now come. You go to bed and have a good rest. Have a little cry. Say your prayers. That'll make you comfortable. I heard your prayers. Thank God it's all over. Well? Don't you thank God it's all over? Now you're free and can do whatever you like. What am I fit for? What have you left me fit for? Where am I to go? What am I to do? What's to become of me? So that's what's bothering you, is it? I shouldn't worry about that if I were you. I can't imagine you'll have much trouble settling yourself someplace or other. Although I hadn't quite realized you were going away. You might marry, you know. You see, Eliza, all men are not confirmed old bachelors like me and the colonel. Most men are the marrying sort. Poor devils. <laughs> and you're not bad looking. You're quite a pleasure to look at at times. Well, not now, of course. You've been crying and look like the very devil. <laughs> but when you're all right and quite yourself, you're what I should call attractive. Now come, you go to bed and have a good night's rest. Get up and look at yourself in the morning, and you won't feel so cheap. I dare say my mother could find some chap or other who would do very well. We were above that in Covent Garden. What do you mean? I sold flowers. I didn't sell myself. Now that you've made a lady of me, I'm not fit to sell anything else. Tosh, Eliza. Don't insult human relations by tracking all that cant about buying and selling into it. You needn't marry the fellow if you don't want to. What else am I to do? What happened to the idea of a florist shop? I dare say Pickering could set you up in one. He's got lots of money. Of course, he'll have to pay for all those togs you've been wearing. And that, with the hire of the jewels, will put a large hole in 200 pounds. Come. I must be off to bed. I'm devilish sleepy. And you'll be all right. But I was looking for something. What was it? Your slippers. Yes. You shied them at me. All the way over here, you shied them at me. Before you go, sir. Hey? Do my clothes belong to me or to Colonel Pickering? What the devil use would they be to Pickering? <laughs> Why need you start bothering about that in the middle of the night? I want to know what I may take away with me. I don't want to be accused of stealing. Stealing? You shouldn't have said that, Eliza. That shows a want of feeling. I'm sorry, I'm only a I'm an ignorant girl, and in my station we have to be careful. There can't be any feelings between the like of you and the like of me. Will you please tell me what belongs to me and what doesn't? 
You may take the whole damned house if you'd like. Except the jewels. They're higher. Will that satisfy you? Stop! Please. Will you take these to your room and keep them safe? I don't want to run the risk of their being missing. Give them here. These are mine instead of the jewelers. I ran them down your ungrateful throat. This ring isn't the jewelers. It's the one you bought me in Brighton. I don't want it now. Don't you hit me! Hit you? How dare you accuse me of such a thing? It is you who have hit me. You have wounded me to the heart. I'm glad I've done a little of my own back anyhow. You have caused me to lose my temper. A thing that has hardly ever happened to me before. I prefer to say nothing more tonight. I'm going to bed. You'd better leave your own note for Mrs. Pierce about the coffee, for it won't be done by me! Damn Mrs. Pierce! And damn the coffee! And damn you! And damn my own folly at having lavished my hard-earned knowledge and the treasure of my regard and intimacy on a, a heartless gutter snipe! Stumble, darling, and I'm. 